here is once again an example of of what is taking place. Iran has sent its first shipment of drones to Russia for use in Ukraine. And that's significant for many reasons, right? Because, you know, you, you could look at it this way that, that Iran is effectively now involved in Ukraine, right? Um, the thing is that these agreements with Russia, they go back before that. You know, it, this is not the first time that they cooperate uh, militarily. Regardless, regardless, the, it is significant. It is very significant. And they're mocking this in the West, right? They, they say that, well, the fact that, that Russia has to import drones from Iran is something to mock because, like, the, you know, the drones are not good or something like that. I can tell you one thing, man. When the, the uh, Houthis, right, in Yemen had blown up the oil fields in Aramco. Uh, so Aramco is the Saudi oil company. Uh, using Iranian drones, as they claim, as they allege. They weren't laughing then. They did not have mechanical failures then, did they? Um, and again, it's, it's, uh, it's just to give you some context, because if you come and read the New York Times and, and all these, uh, you know, wa the Washington Post and their side of the story, they're breaking the story, but they're doing it also with their own opinion, right? And they're trying to say that, well, this is pathetic and da da da. No, I, I, I would not be uh, scoffing at them too soon. The two, types of, the two types of drones being provided to Russia are the Mohajer 6 and the... Uh, Shahid series, okay? So these are different payloads and different capabilities. So Mohajer 6 has the capability to carry out surveillance and reconnaissance missions. Um, and the Shahid series is considered among the most capable of Iran's military drones. Now, in the New York Times, look what they say here. They say that Iran is a pioneer in drone technology with at least four decades of design and manufacturing experience. And it has been providing combat drones to military groups and proxy militia in Yemen, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Gaza. Right? So underneath that, they say officials in Israel, the United States, and some Sunni Arab countries like Saudi Arabia have said that they are increasingly concerned that Iran's advancing drone technology could destabilize the region and empower militias backed by Iran. You know, this speaks to my other point, which is that uh, Iran is very capable this is not something to do with, like, you know, what some morons on a forum online say, like, oh, Iran shot down an American drone and reversed engineered it. No, that, that even the New York Times is telling you they've been doing this for four decades, right? And they're very good at it. And they're so good at it that they've got all the U.S. allies in the region scared. I would not scoff at this, like, you know, Iran is sending uh, the Russians some, uh, you know, toy soldiers or something. No, 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 this is very serious. Here's the next headline from the New York Times. Russia is buying North Korean artillery, according to U.S. intelligence, okay? So they have bought millions of artillery shells and rockets from North Korea, um, according to newly declassified American intelligence. Now, when it comes to artillery shells and rockets, I mean, uh, the Ukrainian defense ministry, they were mocking this on Twitter, uh, saying that, uh, you know, the Russians must be, must be desperate that they're turning to North Korea and so on. I mean... Uh, these are artillery shells. You don't, you don't exactly need, <laughs> you know, artificial intelligence to operate artillery shells. You just need cannons. That's it, right? Um, and rockets. Again, basically, you can fire a missile at a specific location. A rocket, it's, it's once again, it's, uh, I don't want to call it, I don't know if it, you could call it dumb ammunition, but yeah, that's basically what it is. So the fact Russia is buying it from North Korea doesn't really mean anything because these, these types of munitions don't have any tech in them. They don't need any tech to be operated. So uh, the Ukrainian defense ministry making fun of Russia buying this, I, I don't really see the relevance. Um, and uh, what they were saying is that basically, uh, you know, the Russians are going to import the North Korean lifestyle or something. This is the tweet from... from uh, just a few days ago, they say, Russia is buying weapons from North Korea. Soviet weapons have indeed exhausted their potential. Thus, Ukraine is switching to NATO standards. Those who are unable to transform to NATO standards switch to North Korean standards, be it weapons, politics, standard of living. Yeah, okay, well, I, again, I think there's a little bit of inaccuracy uh, in this statement because when they say... Thus, Ukraine is switching to NATO standards. Ukraine was switching to NATO standards many years ago. It didn't happen now, right? Uh, they don't tell you this because uh, they don't want you to know, but 
the Ukrainian troops have been training to NATO standards for many years now. This is not new. Nothing new. All right? And the term, the key term is interoperability. So, you know, it's like, it's like a modular thing. You can remove a Ukrainian unit, put an Italian one in its place, or vice versa. That's what it means, interoperability. Okay? And I, uh, I don't... What does NATO standards mean? You know, death and destruction? Okay, I guess they dodged a bullet. No pun intended. <laughs> anyway, here's uh, the um, uh, article from the uh, New York Times. They're saying that the first shipment was sent and uh, it arrived in Russia. Uh, meaning, I'm talking about the drones from Iran. And for, for the moment, the uh, story about them buying artillery shells from North Korea, I mean, it's just, according to U.S. Tel intelligence, there's nothing um, substantive right now except this article. But uh, they're, they're basically explaining down here that maybe Russia's resorting to North Korea because the Chinese um, are respecting the exports control, the arms exports control. So, you know, basically the, the uh, uh, Americans and NATO, they don't want anyone selling weapons to the Russians. And so the, China looks like it's following um, that, that protocol, right? That it's, it's respecting the uh, export control and refusing to sell any munitions or weapons to the Russians. And that's why. And thus, they are going, uh, the, the Russians are going to, to North Korea. Again, this is, I guess, uh, speculative. Because, you know, for all we know, uh, they could certainly be giving the Russians um, armaments or munitions i i literally just told you a few minutes ago that the russians for the last week have been conducting drills with the chinese right so this is in the far east of russia this is on the sea of so we're talking about the the sea of japan and east china sea that i i, I wouldn't be so sh sure i wouldn't be so certain that that's the thing and with um when it comes to north korea you know they have nuclear weapons um and uh not only that but they have their own versions of Russian or Soviet armaments, the Chinese as well, right? So they would take a Kalashnikov, for example, and then modify it to, to their liking and so on, and then develop their own tree that way. In any case, I just wanted to show you this because I thought that it's very significant to see the military ties that you um, uh, have between Russia and China, Russia and Iran, Russia and North Korea, and so on. They're expanding, are they not? They are. And while they want to mock that in the West, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't underestimate it so much. I wouldn't be so keen to to just scoff at it. Um, again, they, you know, they did that with the sanctions, and look what happened. 